All right, one more to go. So, screen protector. All right, when it comes to sorting algorithms, my uh, personal favorite is insertional sort. Now, there are many uh, better sorting algorithms. This one's still O of n squared time, if you know what that means. That's the time complexity. Uh, quick sort is quicker, merge sort is quicker. A lot of the better sorts are quicker than insertion sort, but insertion sort is still useful. It's actually so useful that at, uh, once an algorithm, some, once the better algorithms get to a, a subproblem of a certain size, they'll start switch over to insertion sort to, to solve the sor a small arrays because they're just that. It's just that uh, quick. Insertion sort is great for really small sets, and it also can do something uh, that other sorting algorithms just can't, which is called online sorting, where basically if you you are sorting a bunch of numbers, and then you tell it, oh, I forgot half the numbers or a bunch of the other numbers. Here's um, more things you need to sort. It doesn't need to start over. Other algorithms will probably need to start over from the beginning. Insertion sort, it's good. It can keep going. Okay, so insertion sort, let's go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so insertion sort is a pretty nice sorting algorithm. And it's easy to confuse with uh, with uh, selection sort. And like most of the other ones, you'll need two loops uh, for these. Um, you know, these will these require nested loops for to do this. But um, the algorithm people confuse it with uh, selection sort, but it's very very difficult. Okay, so insertion sort um, works by le saying let's go ahead and construct a sorted array, uh, you know, let's create a sorted section of the array, and then we'll have an unsorted section of the array. And what we'll do is we'll slowly move items from the unsorted section of the array into the sorted section of the array. So you have, we'll have a, so the array is essentially going to get split, is split into two sections that we're going to keep separating, the sorted section and the unsorted section. So, okay, well, we need to start out with a, with a sorted section, and we're going to start out by saying, well, item, this section of the array is sorted, this section of the array is unsorted. That works because, of course, an item by itself is sorted, right? There's nothing to compare it against. So this is the sorted section of the array. This is the unsorted section of the array. So now what we do is that we look at the next item, is that uh, the al what the algorithm does is that we continuously look at the next item in the unsorted portion of the array, and we insert it into the appropriate place in the sorted section. So what we're going to do is that we're going to move to into the sorted section of the, we're going to move to into the sorted uh, array. So we're going to essentially push down. So we're going to compare 2 and 6. Uh, 2 is smaller than 6, so it should go in front. Uh, 2 is at the front of the array, so we're, we can stop. And this is our sorted section. This is the unsorted section. Okay. So what we're going to do is that, again, we continuously just take the next item in the unsorted section and move it in, and insert it uh, downwards into the sorted section. So here we've got to, we're going to need to take 4 and insert it into the appropriate place. So 4 compared to 6, OK? We will compare 4 to 6. 4 is smaller than 6, so it should go in front. So we'll swap them, OK? And now we compare 4 to 2, OK? 4 is smaller than 2. Sorry, 4 is bigger than 2, so it's perfectly able to stay there. And then, so we just stop, right? We, we can see it, right, like this, perfectly fine that we should stop here, okay? Um, and But how does the computer know that's safe to stop? Well, because we know that the sorted portion is sorted, anything that, ke that came in front of 2, if there's more stuff in front of 2, neg like negative 1, negative 2, uh, that stuff is already going to be in order. It's already going to be sm uh, smaller than 2, so we don't have to check for against the items that are already, the additional items that are already sorted. We found the point at which we should stop swapping, so we're done. Right? All these items are going to be guaranteed to be smaller than four, so we don't need to bother checking them. Right? We are guaranteed to not have something like this because this wouldn't have been a sorted subsection. Right? So we can just stop there. Okay? So now we insert the next item. Compare one to six. Swap them. Compare one to four. Swap them. Compare one to two. Swap them. One's at the front, so there's nothing else to swap it against, so we stop. So now three compared to, uh, compared, so now we're going to insert three, three compared to six, three is smaller than six, three is smaller than four, 
okay? Uh, three versus two, three is bigger than two, so we can stop because we know everything in front of two uh, is already gonna be smaller than two, so there's no need to check, okay? Um, okay, now comparing, inserting five. Five is smaller than six, so we're going to swap five and six. And this is the part where, I, where basically it's really nice, right? You can already see that it's sorted. Now, the program doesn't necessarily know that, but it figures it out very quickly. It compares, it says, okay, we need to insert this into the appropriate place in the sorted array. Seven compared to six, well, six, the seven is bigger than the six, so we don't need to insert it anywhere, okay? And then eight is bigger, then we gotta insert eight. Eight is bigger than seven, we don't need to insert it anywhere, so we can just move on to the next one. But there is no next one, so we're done. So insertion sort is a very, very um, quick algorithm. It can be done in place very quickly. Um, so those are your three sorting algorithms for the sorting algorithm assignment. And then the um, last part I will go into right now by covering the last thing about 2D arrays we need to know, which is jagged arrays.